Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be doing some more key features of graphs. We're going to be doing some x and y intercepts. When is the graph positive and negative, increasing and decreasing, and even some in behavior? So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to tell you when to actually know when the x and y intercepts are occurring, and so on and so forth. So the x intercept is when y is equal to zero. And the y-intercept would be when x is equal to 0, okay? The other way you could think about it, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you like the official math way. The other thing you could do is just determine when it crosses the x-axis, that would be an x-intercept, versus when it crosses the y-intercept, that would be a y-intercept, okay? So that's another way you could also view it if it's a graph. When, in the po when the graph is positive and negative, it is positive when y is positive and it is negative when y is negative, okay? But I don't like thinking of that. I like thinking of it as when are you above the water, everything above the water that I did right here, this would be when you are positive. Anything that you are below the water or below the ground, this would be when you are negative right here visually. So anytime the graph is down here, negative. Anytime the graph is up top, positive. Increasing and decreasing is referring to the slope. If the slope is positive, we are increasing. If the slope is negative, we are decreasing. But you could also think of it as when are you going up the mountain? That would be when you are increasing. And when are you going down the mountain? That would be when you are decreasing. Okay. Now, it does not matter what the y values are, if they're positive or negative for increasing or decreasing, though. So let's do some examples. We got this first problem where we need to know what is the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the positive, negative, and increasing and decreasing of essentially a line. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my x and my y-intercepts. My y-intercept and my x-intercept both happen to be at 2. So I'm going to label that 2. I'm going to label this 0, and then this would be like 0, comma 2. So with that in mind, my x-intercept specifically should be 2, comma 0, because my x-intercept occurs when y is equal to 0. My y-intercept would be 0, comma 2. Now, your teacher might be OK with you just writing down 2 for the x and the y-intercept there. It is positive anytime we are above the water, and we are above the water everywhere up here. This is when we are positive, and that occurred from negative infinity up until 2. This 2 is the x value. It is not the y value. Okay, so positive, negative, increasing, decreasing, all of those are for the x values, not the y values. It is negative after that point. Everywhere down here is negative. So everywhere over there would not be OK. And that is occurring from 2 to positive infinity. Even though it's going down, that is still going to the right. This is where positive infinity occurs on the right side of the graph. When is the graph increasing? Well, this graph is always having a negative slope. So it is never increasing. But it is always decreasing, and if it's always decreasing, it's decreasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. This graph's entire life is decreasing. All right, let's do the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and all the stuff on this graph. This one is a parabola. It has a singular x-intercept. It could have had two, but in this case, it just has that one x-intercept at negative two. And it has a y-intercept at one, two, three, four. Okay, so the x-intercept would be at negative 2 comma 0, and the y-intercept would be at 0 comma 4. When is the graph positive? The graph is positive for, you could argue, the entire existence of this graph. However, there is a blip moment right at this spot right here. This is negative 2 comma 0. Well, 0 is not positive. And because 0 is not positive, it is positive from negative infinity from the left all the way up until you get to negative 2, and then from negative 2 to infinity. Okay? 
So notice how on all of these, I'm not including the bracket because it is positive up until that moment and then it is neither positive nor negative. Same thing here, it's never going to be negative. So I'm not gonna say at zero it's negative, at zero it's zero, not negative. It is increasing at this point right here, it's increasing from negative two up into infinity to the right. So we're focusing on the x values, not the y values. So this is an x value, not a y value because we are going to the right for increasing and decreasing. It is increasing from negative two for x all the way forever for x. It is decreasing when we are going down the mountain. We are going down the mountain right here. This would be where it's decreasing. This would be where it's increasing. So here we were decreasing from negative infinity. I know we're at the top of the graph, but we're going from the left side of the graph down to the negative two. So negative infinity to negative two. All right, next one, we gotta find our x, y intercepts of all this stuff. So let's say we have our x intercepts right here. This x intercept is at negative one, two, three, four, five. So negative five comma zero. We also have an x intercept at and, uh, negative one comma zero, and one, two, three, four comma zero. So negative five, Positive, positive one, good grief. Positive one and then positive four. That does not look like four. One, two, three, four, five. Five comma zero. Sure this is negative five, one, two, three, four, negative five, yep. Okay, what is the singular y-intercept? The singular y-intercept is at two. So this would be zero comma two. Now this graph is positive in two different intervals. It's positive right here and it's positive right here. So both of those are where we're above the water. So it is positive from negative five to positive one. We're putting in our x values, negative five to positive one. And for this, we are only including the parentheses, not a bracket. If it was domain and range, we would probably include a bracket. But here, we're only positive from negative five to one, and it doesn't include it, that's why it's parentheses. And from positive five to infinity because we're going to the right. Again, all of these are x values. The only thing that is a y value is the y-intercept and the range. It is negative over here and right here. These would be where it is negative, where it is in red. So this would be from negative infinity, x value, to negative five, x value, and from one to five. From those intervals, that is where we're below the water. Increasing and decreasing is when we are going up and when we are going up. So both of these would be increasing. So the question is, when do we stop increasing? So this we may have to guess, but let's see how close we are. Um, we got at this maximum value, it looks like it is at negative one, negative two, and a half. So we are gonna say it is increasing from negative infinity all the way up until that negative two and a half. All right, again, we do not care about the y value right there. It is only the x value. It is also increasing from one, two, three and a half as well. I would argue that this point right here is at 3.5, so 3.5 to infinity. Now, we're not perfectly certain about that, so that's, that's kind of an estimate. All right. The next one, decreasing. It is decreasing only in this one interval. I'm gonna redraw it because we got too many things going on right here. It is decreasing in this interval right here. That would be where it is decreasing. So that is occurring from the negative 2.5 to the 3.5. So this would be from here to here, and that would be from negative 2.5 to ne positive 3.5. I don't know why I said negative. There we go. So last thing we're gonna uh, handle for the day is determining end behavior. End behavior is always, always, always going to have the exact same setup, so you might wanna start it as that. It is going to look crazy for the first time you see it. As x approaches infinity, f of x approaches blank. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches blank, okay? So that is always the setup. 
It doesn't have to necessarily be in that order, all right? And sometimes you'll see as X approaches this, F of X approaches this, you'll see in different words. What I mean by that, if you have positive infinity and negative infinity, this positive infinity for X is the right side and this is the left side. Okay, so on the right side, all you have to answer are, is, are you going up or down? So here on the right side, we are going, here's the right side, we are going down. Well, down would be negative infinity. Okay, so on the right, we are going down. What about on the left side? On the left side right here, what are we also doing? This is the left side. We are also going down, so that would be negative infinity. No problem there. Let's do a few more so you get the example. Um, so x approaches infinity, x approaches negative infinity. You could flip-flop that if you want to. f of x approaches blank, f of x approaches blank. So look here on the left and the right side. They are both, left and right side, they are both going up this time. So because they're both going up, we answer with a positive infinity. We're filling in the f of x part. That's all we're doing. X approaches, let's flip the script. Left side, negative infinity. X approaches, positive infinity. What is f of x doing? What is f of x doing? Or the y values doing? So on the left side, we are going eventually down. So on the left side, we were going down. So on the left side, we are going to have to put in a negative infinity here. What about the right side? The right side, we are going up, so we would put a positive infinity there. You don't need the positive sign, but if you want to put it, I'm not going to get mad at you personally. All right, so those are three of the things that could happen. The third one, the last one, is actually this last problem right here. See how um, we've had one example that went down on both sides, the other example went up on both sides, and this one went from like down to up. This one is going from down or up to down. So this is the, the last like normal example. As x on the right side, x on the left side, we're gonna make that one the negative one. f of x approaches blank. f of x approaches blank. So on the left side, which is this one right here, on the left, we were going up. So this would be positive infinity. On the right side, this side right here, this is the right side, we are going down. All right, so that's the last normal example. The last two that I have, which are not really the last two order-wise, are going to be unique, okay? So this is just a flat line. Well, a flat line still has a left and a right. See how there's still a left and a right? So we're still gonna have that same setup. X approaches infinity, X approaches negative infinity. It doesn't matter which one you put first, but you might wanna be consistent for yourself. I'm writing it in uh, both orders because occasionally your textbook mixes them around, or your worksheet might mix them around. So on the left side, what is f of x doing? It is approaching a constant number. So let's just say that this is a y-intercept of 2. Does the x ever go up or down? It doesn't. So because of that, on the left side, the y values are just 2. And on the right side, the y values are just 2. All right, so this one x approaching negative infinity, x approaching positive infinity, it stayed, the y value stayed permanently at two, all right? And that is the first introduction potentially that you will have to an asymptote. What about this one over here? x approaches infinity, x approaches negative infinity, f of x is doing what? f of x is doing what? Okay, so here it will keep moving of slowly to the left. So there is still a left and a right side here. On the left side, we are definitely going up. Okay, on the left side, we are going up. Left, we go up. What about on the right side? On the right side, it looks like it's just bottoming out and it just stays bottomed out at what value? It doesn't ever cross this x-intercept. So on the right side, we are staying at zero, which means that the f of x value would be approaching zero, okay? That's gonna do it for this one. There is a part two to this video which talks about how to deal with given key features, sketch the graph. So stay tuned and I will see y'all then. Bye.